love to live on Easy streets No Bunny works on easy streets Just sit around all day Just sit and play the horses Life is sweet For folks who live on no weekly bill that you are that makes your hair turn gray and when opportunity comes knocking I'm Anthony Ortega. This is my wife, Mona uh, Ortega, and uh, her maiden name is Orbeck. Orbeck. Or Orbeck. as we say here, Orbeck. Yeah, or you say here, Orbeck. Yeah, yeah this. Uh, it's going to be in the archives. It's gonna, it should be in, eventually in the archives at the, at the um, at Smithsonian's. But anyway, it's, see what they did? Central Avenue sounds is about. A lot of the musicians, uh, uh, just about all of them are black musicians, uh, and th through the 40s and the 50s, and uh, so a lot of them, you know, were much more known than me. But they did want to write one about myself. And they wrote the biggest book because he, Anthony, was the only Mexican, so they yeah, they yeah. So I was the only uh, Latino baby. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> during the early 50s, uh, it was unheard of for a guy of uh, Mexican descent to be a jazz musician because you were stamped as a Latin, uh, I call it coochie coochie, you know, do da, do da, dum, da, dum, and bongos and all that stuff, see? And so it's difficult not to crack too, for me also, not being black, I mean, still of Latin descent, it was difficult. But as the years went by, it loosened up more and it, it got better. <laughs> What got me enthused was, was learning how to play the saxophone. Say around 1939 or so, I was say I was about 10 or so, or whatever. And uh, I used to hear these swing bands. You know, I was very the first the, one of the first bands I was very impressed with uh, was Glenn Miller and his uh, the beautiful uh, reed section sound he used to have, like with uh, Moonlight Serenade. And so uh, I never I never dreamt that one day I'd be playing with Lionel Hand because uh, he used to play. Uh, of vibes there with the Benny Goodman Trio. I told my mother, I said, oh, mom, uh, can you give me a saxophone? I want to learn how to play the saxophone. Oh, you, you're not gonna, you'll keep it for a little while and then you'll just quit playing it. I said, no, mom, for, for, for sure I'll practice, I want to play one. So I got a, a, a used alto saxophone because it cost less than the tenor saxophone. But anyway, the salesman there, it was at Lockheed's Music Store there in Los Angeles uh, on Broadway and 9th and Broadway or wherever at the time. And uh, the salesman says, oh, this used to belong to uh, one of the saxophone players at Glenn Miller's orchestra. And I said, oh boy, you know, so I don't know if it was true or whatever, it probably was, but I took it home and uh, I didn't know how to play it or anything, but I put it together and tried to honk on it a little bit. And uh, so that's what happened. I just kept practicing, taking lessons 
and getting better and better. or four before the end of 1953 I was on tour in, in Lionel Hampton's first European tour. Uh, Oslo, Norway was our first European stop. So we only had met twice and then I was out skiing one night or one day and uh, I got it. When I came home, my mother said, there was a long distance phone call from Germany for you. And anyway, when I called, then uh, then Anthony asked me to marry him on the phone. And I in said, Germany. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, yeah, that would be nice. Mexican. In fact, they would go follow the crops, you know, when he was with his grandparents. And none of them were musicians. He was the first musician in his family, in my family. Uh, my father was a musician, my mother was a musician, my grandparents were musicians. I started playing piano when I was seven. I took one $5 lesson from Hampton Hawes, a very famous jazz piano player. But anyway, it all started with classical music, but I've always been interested in jazz. And when we got married and we landed in New York from Oslo, and we went to Birdland and I heard Milt Jackson, and I said, if, it's any, if I'm gonna do anything at all, I'm gonna learn to play the vibes. disbanded the band and so uh, that was the end of that uh, uh, engagement with Hamp but uh, after that I didn't tour much because I was married and started to have a family and then from there you know it just went on to whatever other jobs would occur and recordings and stuff like that you know so I actually haven't toured that much I toured all of France all the different cities that was my favorite tour because I was a soloist and it was so nice because uh, to be on the stages and to be uh, recognized and uh, appreciated. That's another back, uh, uh, back fall of some of the musicians. They get so intrigued and so just uh, like their whole life is into the, to the music. Consequently, when, they, when they're not understood, they go into some heavy drugs or this and that and the other. And there's so many other things to life, like, you know, having uh, uh, children or knowing people, all different kinds of people. And uh, so, but so in, in that case, I, I'm not, I'm very happy with the way things have turned out because I have gotten some recognition, uh, if, even if it's not that much in, in, in my own country, but in other countries I have. And uh, that's gratifying there too. And uh, so it's, I mean, I'm not really complaining, you know, it's, uh, it's fine. Mm. 
I mean, we usually try to get in a walk uh, once a day, if we can, if we have the time. And uh, we have a lot of leisurely hours. And uh, We try to get to the Y to go swimming for YMCA, about an hour. you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we play a little bit, but it's we used to play a lot more. Yeah. When we had different jobs, we had to practice different tunes and... And uh, now I'm getting kind of lazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's it well, the feeling makes you, you feel so good if you hear some music that you love. It just makes you feel wonderful. It enlightens you, you know. And to be able to play some of that beautiful music, it gives you a it just gives you a great feeling. <laughs> I like you to welcome if there was a whole big place and you were going to play for thousands of people, you wouldn't even care. I'm a ham. I would play for the people, and he would rather play for himself. I have no regret, regrets at all because uh, I'm just very happy, like I say, that I have been successful on yeah, not on a big level. But things have been rough, very rough, many, many times in our lives. But Anthony has always managed to get another job playing music and. If he would have had to go and work in an office, then he would have had regrets. But he's always done what he wanted to do, which is playing music. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. I guess that's the street we took. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
So anyway, I'm still waiting to be discovered. Maybe this will do it. <laughs> <laughs> this will do it. This is going to do it. No. <laughs>